Hey, it's another bright and shiny new week. So why is it I've been posting all day that it was Tuesday? Where the heck is my head? Well, at least I remember who I am and what we're doing. I'm John Zadar, and this is On Top and Hot. And this is the 24th of July, Monday. <laughs> Monday. So what we do on this show is we focus in on hot OTC and penny stocks. We're looking for stocks that can make us some money as long as they're under five bucks and it doesn't matter what market they're on. Now, when I go looking for my hot penny stocks, I don't go rummaging around through the news and the press releases. I do read them, but that's not my source for finding stocks that have heat, stocks that are ready to run. I look at the charts first. In my opinion, a hot chart doesn't need a big catalyst to move. A cold chart may not move at all with a big catalyst. So I like finding charts that have heat. When I find a chart that has heat, then I go through all those press releases and news filings, looking for something to keep it moving or get it going. Now, I got some stocks like that to share with you today, as I do every day. So pay attention. <laughs> First stock we're taking a look at is HRTX, Heron Therapeutics. This is a biotechnology company. Not one of my favorites to share with you, normally because of the technical terms that I've got to read and try to explain. Well, I get away from all of that with this one. She's got a sweet chart. It is an atypical breakout chart that looks like it's ready to break out. And she's got news. She's got catalyst. So HRTX, she finished the day at $1.55 with just a little over 12% gains. Now she is on the NASDAQ. This is good. I like penny stocks on the major exchanges. They're free to trade. You can trade pre-market, after-market. You can do that. You don't need any special permissions or special training to get in there and trade pre-market aftermarket hours. The only thing you got to do to make it work is change the time period for your order. Normally it just says day. It's a day trade. Well, this isn't a day trade. It's an extended period. So you have to have day plus EXT or good till canceled plus EXT. If you don't put EXT extended hours in there, it won't even see your order until the bell goes off. So what does this company do? Well, I did tell you that they are a biotechnology company. Their description here says the company is a commercial stage biotechnology company. Let's just stop right there. That is an important difference. These are the sort of biotech companies I like to trade. Why? Because of that word right there, commercial stage biotechnology. This means they're selling medications already through phase trials. They're making money. We don't have to go through any of the research and development. We look at a lot of these biotechs. We look at early stage biotech. That's phase one, phase two. That's a couple years of trials out of the way with many years to go. We also look at late stage biotechnology companies. These are phase two, phase three. You've still got three to five years to go. Commercialized stage biotechnology companies are already making money. This company has quite a few drugs right now. These in the green have already been approved. These are both for cancer, Sustol and Synvanti. Both have US FDA approval for chemotherapy induced nausea and vomiting prevention. Then they have pain relief from their Zyne relief. This has been approved in the US Canada and 31 other European countries. They also have Aponvi, which has been approved in the U.S. for post-operative nausea and vomiting prevention. And the only drug they actually have in the pipeline is this HTX034. And they tell us down here it is in phase two clinical trials. And this is for ongoing post-operative pain via local application into the surgical site. So that doesn't sound like a pill you take while you're at home. So these are their money makers right there. So what was the relative volume around this company today? Well, she had a nice increase, about uh, 300% going from 1.7 million to 5.6 million. Share structure for Heron. Don't know what the float is, outstanding. We got about 120 million. And as I tell you all the time, the float can't be higher than that. So we know our float's at least under 119 million. Financials for the company. Well, this is sweet. We have got strong revenues here. 
88, 86. We had 145 back in 2019, but 2022 was good. We had $107 million. We know it's millions because we've got three zeros we've got to add to any of these numbers. And they're in the green. They're making money. They got to take home almost $53 million in 2022. Looking at their quarterly. All right, you see this last quarter in 2022 compared to the first quarter of 2023. There was a little drop from 30 million down to 29.6 million, like $450,000. Well, that was enough to make the investors upset. The market took a heavy drop on this news because they had forecasted they were going to do more, not less. And because they didn't get it right, the investors took it out on them. So that in itself helped bring the price down and give it some push to get back up. And I'm liking the way she's looking right now. Let's take a look at her disclosures here. We do have a few in the last few weeks. We've got an S8 that came out at the end of June. This was them actually issuing about 11 million more shares, but not for a public offering. These were being used to pay employees, to cut deals, things like that. These Form 4s are filed whenever insiders acquire or dispose of the company's shares. Well, these all have to do with that S8 deal right there. They did not buy or sell any, but they did acquire more. Then we've got an 8K, which came out today, and that all attaches to all the news that came out today. They tell us here that the company rises the price in the stock on the layoffs that they announced, and a $30 million private placement financing. Well, that's good news. Well, as long as you weren't one of the people they laid off. Now, this piece of news came out by Seeking Alpha. I looked for a press release here. I couldn't find any information on the layoffs, so I don't know how many they laid off, and I can't read Seeking Alpha. I've been using their site for free way too long. They know me now. And if I want to see any information they've got, I've got to pay for it. And I don't do that. But you can go look and see how many people they've been laying off. That $30 million placement financing press release came out today. Multiple companies all together have a total of $30 million they are investing in the company. That is huge. And the last piece of news that came out today, the company announces cost reduction plan and restructuring. They have tweaked their financial situation so that they're going to save $75 million over the next two years. So they've got strong revenues coming in. They're cutting down their expenses, going to keep more of the money that they're making. And they've got huge investors coming in with huge investments. And the chart is looking like she wants to run. She's already breaking out. We need to get on this before all we're looking at is a caboose going down the tracks. Ooh, ooh. all aboard. Last call for HRTX, Heron Therapeutics. We're going to be doing our charting on Thinkorswim. This is a free trading platform you get when you sign up for TD Ameritrade. And that's free too. So we're looking at a six-month, four-hour chart for HRTX. Six months ago, she was at $4.08. And just after her financials late May, she hit a low of $1.07. Now, she tried to break out right here where it looked like she might want to start leveling out, but she wasn't. She was not leveling out here. She jumped up there, and you see the big letter M there, M for murder, when you see that, I'm being serious, when you see a big letter M like that, in most cases, what you see is a huge fall right after it. And it works in reverse. If you see a big W on the board for winner, you normally see a big run afterwards. Well, we saw a huge drop. And she dropped all the way down here to a buck 50 and then bounced hard because look, our 200 is virtually flat. She's eager to climb. She zoomed towards that flat 200, going from $1.50 up to three bucks, almost 100% rip right there. But it is still on, an, still falling. So she's dribbling, falling downhill, and then came those financials. Missed it by that much. I mean, just barely missed it. And look how far she fell from roughly $2.40 down to $1.07. And then she sat down here biding her time because she didn't have any strength. She was waiting for the 200-day SMA to come. She really does want to climb. And once it came even into the neighborhood, she started making her move. Jumped onto that nine-day escalator and rode it to the 200. Jumped onto the 200. 
fell back onto a very strong 20-day SMA. It's crossing the 200. It's got the backing of that now. That is a small golden cross, if you will. Then she went up really strong today because we've got a strong golden cross, the 50-day crossing the 200, one of the strongest technicals on the charts. Our volume has been growing and was the strongest today. Oscillators are all pushing up and strong. Our PPO, percentage price oscillator, and MACD, which just had a crossover, and our RSI is at a very warm 63 right now. Take a look at that 20-day, one-hour view. That's a good looking chart. Since the low bubble, all these SMAs that were falling have turned. Every single one of them now are pushing up. Our trend has changed. We've got volatility in here. I'm not gonna say it's a nice even run, but she's climbing. You could easily draw a line underneath all this and see she's going uphill. Looks like she's paying most of her attention to the 50 day SMA. She is dipping under it, but that's what's holding her up. And right now, she's way up, way far away from that 50. So I would anticipate her to bounce again. I'd expect her to come back down to that 50. And if she comes down fast, she may go under it a bit. So I wouldn't be buying in up here if you like this. I'd wait for the bounce. Osculators, PPO is pushing up. MACD's climbing. RSI now is at 64. Five day, five minute. Volatility. We've got jumps in the morning. You can see that she likes to run first thing. We had some down days here, and now we've got some volatility and some running again. And she is back to her 50-day SMA on the five-minute chart. Volume was very strong today. That 200 has been rolling, but it's rolling uphill. Even though it was falling, it was falling going uphill. Oscillators right now, they fell, but you can see there is a turnaround right now. They have all started their crossover and look like they're ready to climb. And look at that last bar we got there. That last bar after market hours is pretty big. Jumping from 154 up to 158. That's sweet. She finished the day at 154, so she's already up four cents after market hours. And you can see our oscillators here. Definitely looking like they're on their recovery. HRTX, folks. The money's there. Yeah, they had a bad financial. Says who? The investors but you saw the revenues are increasing they just got a huge investment and they're going to be saving 75 million over the next two years cha-ching hrtx they're doing exactly what we want any company to do i got another hot penny stock in the ai sector for you this is lzg international ticker lzgi but you probably know her better as fat brain ai she has been in the news a lot here recently, and her chart is hot. She is in an atypical breakout, and she started breaking out July 20th. The volume came in, and she started making her move. Now, she's had a lot of news since May. We'll take a look at it. But on July 20th, she came out with an explosive piece of news, and honestly, I don't think we're done seeing the repercussions. So LZGI, she finished the day at $1.18 with just a little over 9% gains. She is on the middle tier of the OTC, the QB. We like to refer to this as the better tier. It's better because they have to audit their financials if they want to be here. That's good for them and us. That's bringing in a CPA, going through it, and accounting. That gives us fundamentals, and it makes them more transparent, more trustworthy. Speaking of trustworthy and transparent, they've got a transfer agent verified and a verified profile. A lot of important validated information being represented by those green ticks. And when you're trading OTC penny stocks, you want as much validated information as you can get. So make sure to see those two. Plus, we got a bonus here. They are penny stock exempt. What this means is they're not risky like penny stocks. <laughs> now, how did they prove that? Well, easy. They were in business for three to five years. They kept millions of dollars of assets or had millions of dollars of revenue and kept up with their financials. In other words, they've proven they're ready to work. They're ready to do what they're supposed to. They are responsible and reliable. So this looks like a solid company. Checking out what their description tells us about them. Fat Brain AI is the first and leading provider of powerful and easy to use AI solutions to millions of businesses of tomorrow. FatBrain's subscription model allows all companies to deploy their advanced AI solutions quickly and easily. 
securely utilizing them on premises behind their firewalls or via cloud. So companies are getting the AI, bringing it in on their own system, on their own premises. And I don't know exactly what they do. Does anyone know what AI does yet? They're making money. That's what they do. What was the relative volume around the company today? Oh, we had a drop. That is surprising to me. I was not expecting that. Her average is 63,000 shares a day. I'll bet if we went to Yahoo Finance and looked up the daily volume, we would see some real strong days in there. That seems awfully low to me. And today was even lower, down to 54,000 shares. Very curious. Share structure. This too is curious. Outstanding share count is 167 million. Looks like the insiders have more than the lion's share of 151 million. If these numbers are accurate, and they look like they are by the dates over here, that leaves us with a float of 15 million. Not bad for an AI company. Financials for LZGI. Well, she made something at the end of 2022. She had $216,000. Don't forget those three zeros up here. Checking out her quarterly. Whoa, whoa. That's incredible. What a jump from $129,000 in this quarter to 2.4 million, 6.9 million, 9.5 million. She is literally growing at leaps and bounds. I told you, AI knows how to make money. Disclosures for the company. All we've got here are the quarterly reports, her financials, which is good. She's all caught up. The most recent one is a 10QA. That's not questions and answers. That is a 10Q that's been amended. There was something wrong with this one. You can see the date here is the same as the date here. They had to fix it. That is the fixed version. Looking at the news. So I have gone back to May 31st here, and we've got some brilliant news. The company achieves fifth consecutive record revenue quarter. No doubt we could see that. The company signs multiple strategic distribution agreements that significantly increase customer base. The company signs several new customers for artificial intelligence suite of products. Fatbrain files for several patents covering its artificial intelligence suite of products. And we need to see that. We need to see them owning patents. That's the only way they're going to protect this money generator. They tell us here this company is a buy rating. It's being covered by some analyst, and that analyst says it has a price target of $5 right now when it's currently at $1.18. And that last piece of news that came out July 20th that started the run tells us that the company completed their fiscal year with revenue of approximately $44 million, up over 20,000% from last year. <laughs> Come on, 20,000% increase means they're doing more than just something right. They have a goose laying golden eggs. AI can make us money. I'm liking it, and I'm liking the charts too. They are hot. Let me share that with you. Oh, that's a hot chart. Look at that blue flame in this corner over here. This is ticker LZGI. That is a six-month, four-hour chart. Six months ago, we had a high of $3.20, a volatile downtrend to a low of $0.10 cents in April. And off of this low bubble, she changed her trend. And she's not volatile anymore. For months, she has been growing slowly and steadily, waiting for that 200 to come down. And when they met, they exploded. She had a big burst up there, came down, and she's landed on her 9-day SMA, floating and starting to climb again. Which does surprise me because the 200-day SMA is not as flat as I would like to see it. So I would not be surprised to see the price come back down and tap the 200 before it launches. But in saying that, we got a 50-day SMA just about ready to touch that 200. That's a golden cross. That is a power sign. So she may avoid coming down and just take off. Volume has been strong these last few days compared to the days before. And look at that PPO. That PPO has been growing for a long time, getting stronger and stronger. MACD has got a crossover right now. She is pushing up, and our RSI is clear up near 65. Four-hour chart is looking dandy. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour chart. Well, that's a dandy chart, too. Low bubble in this corner of 61 cents, floating on our 50-day SMA. Took a bounce here, 
We know why. She was breaking the 200-day SMA on the four-hour chart. Came back down and she's landed securely on her 50-day SMA, working her way up. Things look steady. 200-day SMA is following in path. Osculators are a little weaker here, but they're more planted than anything else. They've just kind of leveled off. Five-day, five-minute chart. Whew. So there was our jump. This came on the 18th. She went sideways for a few days, fell down to our new SMA that came on the board, the 200-day SMA. I always am expecting the price to gravitate to the new SMA on the board, and she did. She came down to it, came under it. She's bouncing off of her 200-day haul, and she's kind of stuck in the middle right now. Osculators say she's trying to recover. I don't much like the five-minute chart, but I like the news. I like the four-hour chart. I think the company's got a lot going on. I think it deserves to be on your watch list. 20,000% increase. That means this company knows what they're doing. The next one could be even more impressive. The last penny stock we're looking at has got everything we're looking for. A hot chart and a hot catalyst. This is Quad M Solutions, ticker MMMM. Now, her chart is brilliant. It is another atypical breakout chart, but she hasn't even started to break out yet. She's just walked up the steps and she's standing right in front of the door getting ready to knock. And she's got a huge catalyst. She just had news come out about a deal she's involved with. So I'm thinking right now is a perfect time to be looking at Quad M. Quad M finished today at 0 0.017 with 5.5% losses. She is on the pink tier. She's current. She's got a transfer agent verified, but we don't see our verified profile here. Not a deal breaker, but we would like to see it. We've got independent directors. This means they have plans to uplist. I don't know of any other reason you need to put independent directors here. So that gives us a heads up. So what is Quad M all about? Well, that's questionable. They tell us here that Quad M Solutions owns and operates three wholly owned subsidiaries, Open Access, Prime Access, and New Access 2. They sell affordable, sustainable health benefit plans, self-insurance plans, employee benefits, and retirement plans through the use of health savings accounts. Now, I went and looked. Their website is up, operating. And that surprises me because when you look at their financials, they were doing very well. And all of a sudden, it's like they just disappeared. To me, it looks like they're going through a change of operations. But I don't see any news about winding down or selling the other one. But I don't see any activities either. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Now, we had a little bit of increase, though it was a real slow day. First thing at the bell, I saw most of the penny stocks fall and fall hard, and it just took the rest of the day to climb back up to where they started. Today, she did 1.3, almost 1.4 million shares when she's normally doing 1.1 million. So she did kick up about 25%. Share structure for Quad M. Outstanding shares. We've got about 265 million, and it looks like we get most of them, 245 million in the float. Kind of high. Financials for Quad M. All right, as you can see, they're making good money here. Every single year was increasing over the year before. Now check out the quarterly. What happened? What happened here? 17, 18 million for three quarters up till September 2022. Then the last quarter, she falls down to 378,000, losing $5.6 million and the first quarter of 2023, she's only got $4,000 on the books. Sounds to me like they are winding down or dropped or quit doing whatever it was they were doing before, and now they're going to be doing something new, which is pretty exciting. Looking at the disclosures for the company, well, it looks like we've only got one here. Came out July 19th and 8K. I did take a peek at this, and this actually correlates to the news. Now, we got lots of news over here if you're into old news. This is all from 2020 and 2019. And all this news is from the same day, July 19th. It's the only piece of news we've had since 2020. And it's all about the same thing. They tell us here that Quad M Solutions has announced the acquisition of Rev Technologies, a leading race-to-road electrification technology company.
The acquisition gives QM Racing ownership rights to the highly anticipated Riley Street Fighter. That's what you see in the video. A cutting edge, three-wheeled electric vehicle being developed by Rev Technologies in association with North Carolina's based Riley Technologies. With an impressive zero to 60 miles per hour acceleration in under three seconds and up to 200 mile range per charge and a customizable price range, the company says that the Street Fighter will aim to redefine the power sports market with best in class performance and sustainability. Leveraging Riley's expertise and production facilities, the company expects to scale up to Street Fighter production in the near future. Today's electric three-wheel market is expected to nearly double in the next 10 years and exceed $1.5 billion. QM Racing is dedicated to delivering high-performance electric vehicles that combine cutting-edge technology with a passion for automotive excellence. So I guess you could say they're building muscle cars, the electric kind. Now, I was interested in this Riley Technologies, so I looked them up, and they do have their own website. Riley's Technologies is a family-owned, based company in Mooresville, North Carolina, dating back to 1960. Riley has been a mainstay in North American automotive design engineering, manufacturing, assembly, and race team operations. Riley designed, operated, and built cars that have won the 24 Hours of Daytona 20 times, in addition to countless other motorsport races. Now, what's really interesting is a piece of news I found that came out one day before the deal we were just looking at. This came out the 18th. Rev Technologies and Riley signed deal to produce all-electric, high-performance race vehicles. So, Riley just made a deal with Rev Technologies. And then, Quad M just made a deal with Riley for Rev. And they're all working together with all of the facilities that Riley's got. This is exciting to me, folks. I think this is the start of something new. I think they've gotten rid of the insurance business. I can't say that for sure, but I think this is new. When are they going to start production? I don't know, but the facilities are already built. So all they got to do is start doing it. Let's go take a look at that chart. Looking at Quad M Solutions, ticker MMMM. This is a six-month, four-hour view. Six months ago, we had a high of 10 and a half cents a very long drawn out fall to 0085. That was at the end of May. Now you can see this is a perfect example of an atypical breakout chart. Price underneath the 200. 200 coming down like a ski slope. What we're looking for is it to come into the parking lot. That's when the price gets on board. Right now you can see she's showing interest. As it's gotten closer, she's gotten closer to it but we haven't seen a directional intentional spike. I wanna see one of these bars break through, even if it's just a wick. I want it to go all the way through and then fall back to where she started from. As long as she doesn't lose any power, I consider that a token sign that she's gonna climb, just waiting for an opportunity. So she's gotten close twice. I'm gonna be watching for that spike. She is pushing up right now, volume is pretty consistent, and her oscillators aren't bad. They are a little cool right now because today wasn't a great day, but she's still on top of her nine-day SMA. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. Our low here is just over a penny. She was way down underneath everything, pushed herself strong. Now, that's the kind of spike I'm talking about right there. Pierce the 200, then come back down. And then stay underneath if you want because now I know you're looking for an opportunity to run. 200 was level here, starting to curve up. She jumped another huge jump, bouncing from uh, 1.3 cents up to 2.3 cents, about 85% gains. Falling back to the nine day SMA, then only going sideways, waiting for the 20. It did not come barreling back down to the 50 or the 200. Now you got a spike here, fell all the way down to the 50 and the 200. You see that? I don't think that was an intentional, I'm going to fall spike. I see that as a foundational spike. It's a pillar that came all the way down and it's sitting on cement right now, holding this entire structure up. And I think she's going to continue to climb. However, the oscillators do say she's pulled back a little bit and we can see that. Five day, five minute. Had a nice bounce here off of this low of 1.2 cents 
up to 2.2 cents. There's that 80% run coming back down to the 20 day SMA, landing on the 50. Looking like the 50 is what she's hanging on to and she's going sideways right now, but she's got a huge catalyst. Now, how soon are they gonna start production? I don't know, but they've got the facilities. Riley has everything they're gonna need. So Reb, Riley, and Quad M are all working together. So they could surprise us here. M, 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 M. Right now, you may want to put it on your watch list and just see if there's any interest in the news. But down the road, when news comes out that they're putting them on the market, that's going to be hot. Didn't you think it looked cool? Well, how do you like them pancakes? <laughs> All three of those charts were great atypical breakout charts. Two out of three of them are already breaking out. One is setting up. Two out of three of the companies we looked at have strong revenues. HRTX, selling the heck out of those drugs. Then you got LZGI, better known as Fat Brain AI. They're making money hand over fist. AI knows exactly what they're doing. Then you got MMMM. As far as I'm concerned, this is a change of operations. I don't think that they're doing insurance anymore. I think they're doing electric muscle cars. All three of these are interesting to me. Are they to you? Well, don't let my information be the end of your due diligence. I tell you enough to get you interested. If you like them, go do some more. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.